happens to be a little more interesting in the factions we played. Yeah, because the, the killing, the killing was yeah. fun. <laughs> Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I'm Austin Harrison. And today we are not really reviewing so much as talking about yeah. Mythic Mischief, Tack, and Santorini. Yeah. These are my three favorite abstracts. That's... Almost easily. Almost easily. The only the only hesitancy is a game called Tsar, which I almost want to like completely stop everything we're doing and, and add play that. that play. We'll do it another time. This... Okay. <laughs> I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted. Another time. Another time. We'll, we'll, we'll keep these limited. So these are the three games. Uh, Tsar... I'm going to throw Tsar in there. My four favorite abstracts, I feel like I completely botched this entire series because we just had a video where we played three, the other three. Yeah, yeah. And for some reason, I excluded Tsar. I think the reason I excluded Tsar is because Tack is my favorite. Right. of the uh, of, uh, Before we go to Mythic Mischief, Tack is my favorite abstract. Yep. Santorini and Tsar, I think I prefer Tsar. Mm -hmm. But Santorini has abstract powers, which is why I wanted to include in this yeah, conversation. Yeah. And Tsar is not. Tsar is just a slightly divorced version of Tack. Very, very good. Not as good as Tack. Uh, then we have Mythic Mischief, which is a combination of a variety of elements. And yeah. I wanted to introduce you to the other two games. Yeah. And then I, have a conversation. I, well, first off, thank you. Yeah. You're a great teacher, and it was very easy to jump in. Um, I was especially thankful that you saved me from losing a few times yes. so that I could come back and win. <laughs> uh, win. Uh, but super interesting to play both of those. I definitely should have played Santorini by mm -hmm. now. And since I'm a fan of Patrick Gothis, I should have played Tag. Yeah. I just didn't know that that was the game from that. So... I think at this point, they're very different. Yes. But there are common themes. Yes. Uh, the grids are the biggest common theme. Abstracts. And you, you would bring that up a lot in our, yep. our videos, what is an abstract. Um, Great video. I'll link that down below. What is an abstract? I mean, I'm biased, obviously. I'm in it, but yeah. But what, one of the things I like about the other two that is not found in Mythic Mischief is fast turns. Yeah. Very, very fast turns. Much faster turns. Mythic Mischief, as we demonstrated, can have some thinky turns. Now... There is the blitz mode that that makes that impossible. You just have to act. But it does so by uh, compromising by, by the time. essence yeah, of the yeah. abstract. Yep. So one, one that's a knock against Mythic Mischief and a plus in Santorini and Tax Favor. In yep. my in my hundred percent, I agree one hundred percent. Um, what I like about Mythic Mischief is while Santorini has small asymmetry, mm -hmm. Mythic Mischief has big asymmetry, much larger. Yeah, and I like that a lot. Um, and then the third party aspect of the the Tone Keeper, mm -hmm. I think, sets it apart from the other two as well. Um, not necessarily in a good or a bad way. It's just very different, different comparatively. Because that's like placing and stacking. Those yeah. are the the sing like there's no stacking in this either. Which is interesting. interesting. Yeah, there's no stacking. There's wall movements. A whole different conversation. There's blocking, yeah. but there's there's blocking in tack. There's blocking in myth of mischief. There's blocking in Santorini through stacking. Yeah. But it takes a few turns. You have to lock it. It's yeah, not like pure have, blocking. It's not just you have to done. get that extra level up. Right. Uh, there's asymmetry in Santorini. There's asymmetry in mythic mischief. There's no asymmetry in tack. Yep. There's a lot more thinkiness in tack and mythic mischief than there is in Santorini, in my opinion. Although yeah. not necessarily as clearly. Definitely the easiest to learn, and play well out of yeah. three. I think probably tax the easiest to learn. But Technically, because there's an escalation. Yeah, there's there. not much, but but as far as to play well, very yeah. difficult. And what I think uh, a ding against a ding against Santorini and tack, not against Mythic Mischief, okay. and mostly against Santorini, a little bit against tack, and not at all against Mythic Mischief, is the getting up to the part that's interesting. Mm. Meaning Santorini starts off, and it's almost always... It happens to be a little more interesting in the factions we played. Yeah, because the, the killing, killing, the killing was yeah. fun. <laughs> but normal Santorini, it takes like several turns of placements before you've even built something to realistically start having that's thinkiness like around. Othello. Yeah, same idea. It same takes idea. forever to get to yep. the part where that's interesting. And Tack has... Tack moves up a lot quicker, but mm -hmm. there's still a few placements before you actually have something to play with. Yep. Uh, Mythic Mischief starts immediately with something to play with if you do the presets. Yeah. Alternatively, you're drafting into uh, into fairly quickly, you know, getting up and going. But as soon as you start going to the moving phase of things, yep. it's already like, okay, now what? Yep. And it has the most going on, which is both a pro and a con. Yeah. I, at least in my opinion. I think that the... It lends itself to the longest turns because it's almost impossible for you to think through everything that can be done for you or against you, yep. which leads to thinking turns on your opponent's turn, on your turn, at least to downtime. The Blitz Mode solves that, changes the game state. But the upside of that is it has the most potential for finding clever moves within it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, Tack is going to be the one that falls more middle ground there because Tack, I think... The, the yeah. unstacking is The unstacking moves. is so interesting. Tack yeah. is almost the best combination of them towards me. Meaning, when I if I have to weigh up Santorini versus Mythic Mischief, love them both. I like Mythic Mischief more. Not a question. Awesome. Thank the you. one that I, I can't figure out and I still have not figured out is Tack versus Mythic Mischief. Yeah. Because they're much more different. They're very different. But, yeah. It, I think it really depends on the mood. If I'm, you know, 
sitting down, not at a table, but I'm like sitting down at like a coffee table or whatever, or whatever. I'm pulling tag out way before I pull my fingers. Well, it's just a coffee so, table for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just something that you can be like, hey, this is how you play. Let's just play a few. And you'll, you'll be, your mind will be blown by how simple the components are, but how much strategy there's. There. Tag has for our group often become a go-to filler for when like there's a few people playing games. Some people yeah. show it up and they're waiting around, but then they just keep wanting to play for yeah. like they'll play like ten minutes at a time. But they'll oh, play yeah. it for like three hours, and not the, three hours an hour. The, the escalation of learning too, it's like a three by three, a four by four, a five by yeah. four. That's awesome. Yes. It's it really very cool. easy. Yeah. Very easy to dive into. And it's just like, yeah, like that, the, I was like, this is just tic-tac-toe, yeah. Alex. This isn't that fun. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, okay. This, this is really things. growing. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I like that escalation. Whereas yeah. in Mythic Mischief, and, and, and in all, a lot of times abstract games, the learning curve, or not really, the experience value is huge. Yeah. Like someone yeah. playing Mythic Mischief for the first time, someone playing against Myth, someone that's played five even 10, 20 times, there is a huge skill level It's seeing gap. those patterns. Yeah. That goes back to the point about like, oh, thanks for letting me win after seeing... No, no, I'm supposed to see the patterns. I played this yeah. game. I don't view it as I won. I view it as I lost four times because I made a move <laughs> and then saw that I was dead before you had moved. It's like, no, no, wait, no, 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 no. I'm like uh, seeing my own deaths pop up in the patterns of the board, which is something that <laughs> happens. But, yeah. And again, I think that's, a, that's one of the things I like about Mythic Mischief a lot, which is even TAC. TAC I like yeah. it a lot because I've played 60 games of TAC by now. Yeah. I don't know the number. I've played a lot, a lot. of games of TAC. Yeah. And I'm still making stupid mistakes where I'm like, no, <laughs> no why did what I do am that? I doing? Yeah. And Mythic Mischief has that in spades because there's this your four abilities, there's my four abilities, yep. there's the interplay of the board, there's where the walls are, there's how the Tome Keeper's moving, yep. and there's a million little things to consider. There's a degree of tableau building, which is very unusual for abstracts. Yeah. Very unusual. That part, like, can you think of any abstract that has tableau building? I do not. Like, asymptotic abilities yeah. we have from Mythic Mischief, tableau build from, from the Santorini. I can't think of tableau building in, in any abstract. It's definitely a hybrid game. Is it's yeah. an abstract, no doubt. Like yeah. we've we've decided that many times. But then it doesn't feel like it necessarily always when you're playing it. It's interesting because for me it's almost the reverse. Oh, it's, I think it's, it's not an abstract, abstract that but it feels, feels like, like an abstract. abstract. Yeah. Oh wow, I got that wrong in your. Well, it depends. depends. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my that's my thing. For me, I think it's the grid that makes me feel like I'm playing yeah. an abstract. Yeah. And then what doesn't makes me is this this whole thing the entire thing yeah the tableau building the choice around how you're going to move and execute on mm -hmm. a, i mean every game to a certain extent devolves to, we're shifting into what's an abstract again. yeah yeah, yeah. We, we've already it. had that conversation yeah, yeah. but the link down below the link down below um so santorini yes i liked the minor asymmetry and yeah. there were a lot of cards it was like 40 cards yeah more there were a lot powers, of powers expansions and i think that would keep that one fresh for me mm -hmm. even though at the end of the day it's just the core gameplay is a little bit simpler yes. than all the others um Tack would have been simpler for me too without that de-stacking. Yes. That, that's what made that game. one yeah. magical for me. And it's not something I, I executed well at all. Yeah. I it didn't takes really time. see it. Takes it. Time. Yeah. And that was that was super cool to see. I like that a lot. Um, whereas in this, we don't have a vertical element at all. It makes me think we should make like a staircase expansion, expansion or something. Ooh. Ooh. Like, I might have to get with you Ooh. on that. Cause like, we should uh, talk. Yeah, like how, how would that... It's like the magic staircases in Harry Potter or something. Oh, okay. Here's the idea. Here's the idea. Offhand, without even going further, yep. when you're going down the staircase, it doesn't consume any tone keeper movement. When it's going up the staircase, it consumes an extra double. movement. Double. But then you have like a multi layer board. I'm not sure it would work. Ooh, it'd break. Play with it. it would make something that already can be a little bit brain birdy and Ooh. maybe set your brain on fire. Ooh, the, 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 the brain on fire expansion. We'll figure <laughs> it out. I like the idea. I mean, I mean, going up in levels is a, is a nice. In both, essentially, I think has the greatest visual. Oh, that's tricky. No, I think I'm going to go with that. I think Santorini has one of the greater visual aspects here. It's the 3D element yes. of it, of building of up. Of watching them all build. Tack probably has the lowest degree. Yeah. Uh, Mythic Mischief is in this weird spot because all the characters and everything are very different, but it, it has a very strong 3D feel to what's happening on the board, right. uh, but possibly the least elegant by the very nature of the graphic design approach or the style to the characters. It looks very stunning on the board, yeah, but less but elegant. Yeah, not, but it's not like finished wood carved pieces yeah or yeah. the blue capped santorini greek style yeah. thing yeah it's just yeah it's different very different um one thing that was interesting too is this the way that you score santorini is just you win yes tax just you win. tax just you win this is have the most points which points aren't a part of any of the other ones which is another thing about abstracts that one we didn't include we, i don't think we included think we points include in the that. conversation no, you, just, you just don't get points. Yeah. And and I, I like the simplicity of just like one win scenario. But for Mythic Mischief, I like that it doesn't just go on and not Forever. Yet. Yes. Yeah. Well that's one of the things I like about Santorini and Hack over Mythic Mischief, which is the fact that because of the nature of the points, I kind of always walk into a turn in Mythic Mischief wanting to do things perfectly. Mm -hmm. I want to set up the board so that you yep. can't capture any of my people. Yep. And really that's not the game. Sometimes you'll get those turns, and that can be amazing. 
But really, the game is making sure you only get one instead of two. Yeah. That's often what the game comes down to. Yep. But I like the feeling of perfection that Santorini... Santorini and Tack give me the feeling of I had another perfect survival weight yep. until the end of the game, which point I lost. So it's right. like, I stopped you from winning. I stopped you from winning. I stopped you from winning. This one's like, I, I have stopped you from winning because you got a point. Right. I didn't get you stopped from two. So there's a little less uh, feeling of accomplishment yeah. when I'm done with my turn. There's not as much defense yeah. gratification. The reverse is true as well, though. The inherent oh, reverse yeah. is true that you catch, you, three. you catch two, you catch three, and there's like, oh, I got you, even though mm-hmm. the game's not over. You can have powerful turns in which you didn't win, but you just had a powerful yeah. turn. Have you played any of the 1v2 uh, no, I've not. It's the one way I haven't played. I played a four player. I played four player blitz. I played uh, the two player. I've not played two player. As blitz. the solo player, when you catch all four of the other minis, yeah, it is the most magical feeling because it's like there were four of you on the board and I got all of them, and you feel really powerful because you get so many boosts and things comparatively. I don't know if I've even had a turn where I captured three. It might have. I played this game enough. I might have, but I don't. It's remember. hard. It's hard. Uh, Capturing two already feels like a win. Yeah. Oh, it's a huge win. And yeah. I mean. I used my, my special ability to get to that one turn. Yep. That was the difference. Because yep. we only played three turns each. Yeah. It was a short, short game. Short game. It was a short game. And, and a lot of that was my the blood, instead of putting it in different things, I put all in distract. Mm-hmm. And then the walls are just so stacked into this corner that it was a straight shot for him to run down here. So yep. that was an interesting interesting ending on that one. But ending it on time, I, I think it's good for Mythic Mischief, but I think I prefer not having someone to be able to rush in Santorini and attack. Like, you can't just rush the turns to end it. I think it was the right choice for Mythic Mission. I'm not saying it's a bad game design Because the game's not about a timer and points. Yeah. It's about it's winner about binary. outsmarting. You either got it or you didn't. Something yeah. to the timer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but I also like the little victories of Mythic Mission. You can, you can have a very winning turn and That's be okay. like, I felt smart. Yeah. yeah. And you still lose the game. And That's still true. lose the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's very it's very interesting. The games the games are very different, but that's why when I compare it head to head to Santorini, there's enough victories in Mythic Mischief for me to understand why I prefer Mythic Mischief mm-hmm. over Santorini, despite loving Santorini. When I compare them head to head, and and by the same thing, when I compare Tack head to head Santorini, I like Tack more. Yeah. Uh, Tack and, and Mythic Mischief have so little overlap in the core design, past trying to take optimal and, and and seeing seeing patterns. Seeing Seen patterns with a lot of things happening. Yep. Attack is a little more simplic- simplicity in what's happening. In Mythic Mischief, it's all about those powers and abilities interplaying and yep. the board state. But the, the only that's the only thing they have in common, seeing the pattern. The rest of it is feels very, very different and I still... I, I, I keep going back and forth on to which one I like better because they feel different. I feel this instinctive need yeah. to compare them, but... Yeah. yeah. Santorini. Yep. Two to four, right? Two to four. That's nothing. I, I, I've never played Santorini with more than two, by the way. I... Your, the board state would just be so different by the time you got back to your turn. I feel playing an abstract strategy game with more than two players kind of kills what it is. Yeah, you can't do the thinky, I'm going to set this up. It comes down to, like, you, okay, you change the state before I can go yeah. back to my turn, so whatever. That I, is, and I've never played that. It's not a critique. It's a, yeah. it's a preference that I think would become a critique, but it can't be a critique until I actually do it. Yeah, I, I want to play it at a higher player count. With, with Mythic Mischief, people ask, well, why didn't you just do three-player, be three different teams? Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is, one, way more time before it gets to your turn. Yeah. It's way more. And then two, the board state, like, your minis could die on the first turn, and then the, the second player, you don't place your minis until the next turn, and it's, just, it's it's really messy on, like, when you're putting your minis back on the board. I wonder if you could take a stuff. land versus sea approach. Have you played land versus sea? Uh, no. Good Games Publishing, it's a two-player head-to-head abstract game of tile laying, trying to create patterns of, mm-hmm. of ocean and lands, land versus sea. Yep. And when you play a three-player, the third player kind of gets these points in this abstract way in which they affect the other players. Interesting. So if you so have they're like playing a th- different games. They're playing different games. The okay. third player is playing a different game than the other two, huh. and the other two players are now going head to head in a way where you're not only being mindful of yourself, but you're being mindful of how do I make sure the third player doesn't end up running for the win. Because if I play directly head to head with you and ignore right. the fact that they're getting points along the way, they'll win. Hmm. So we have to be mindful of the third player while being mindful of our game, and it results in an interesting three player tug of war. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way to have a tone keeper. I don't even know how you'd do this, but I wonder if there's a way to have a third player control tone keeper that doesn't turn into king making. Interesting. Because yeah, it's, it's like, it just I'm turns just into Yeah, that would yeah. be stupid. <laughs> but it could turn into a way in which the third player hypothetically has some control and agency mm-hmm. over the game state in a way that gives them points and it changes the entire way. I, not offering. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's an interesting, but, it's an interesting concept too. Just yeah. like the adding stairs. And then once you have the stairs, you just call the expansion. 
the strange, the guest living upstairs. The guest living upstairs. There yeah. you have. That's, That's the perfect. guest. The guest in the upstairs. But yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I know you have expansions coming up for Mythic Mischief. Uh, yep. Linear expansions, not 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 changing the game, just more. Yeah, I think I think there will be factions and then maybe some like different variants on like board and walls. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily gameplay wise, but okay. art wise. I hope to do in the future. Okay. Uh, and then I know you have a solo mode as well. Yep, the is... solo mode. Yep. Which uh, Tertsi uh, and uh, I can. I'm gonna hurt my. I'm gonna hurt Nick, my brain Nick trying Little. to. David Tersi, Nick Little, and Nick Shaw. Nick Sorry, Shaw. Nick. Nick Shaw. Oh, I knew the Nick. I yep. got the wrong wrong. So name. David Tertsi and Nick Shaw did the solo mode for us, and mm -hmm. I'm so glad we worked with them because it turned yeah. out way better than. I played the solo mode. I like yep. it. Yeah. So they did great. I remember your critique of the solo mode being that you liked that you were still asymmetric, but that the the AI was never asymmetric, yeah. and then that would be what you would add. I would want to. Yeah, I'd want to win against each of the factions. I want right. to try see how the right. vampires affect the game. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can look at doing that in the future. Very cool. cool. That's just it. That's Thanks it. For uh, me. Check the link down below to the full gameplay. It's an hour of us playing the the three games back to back. Timestamps for any section you want. Teach, play, all that stuff. Uh, and then a link as well to the conversation about Mythic Mischief being an abstract. And past that, these are well, this and these three ants are are my f my four favorite abstract games. Until awesome. next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm Austin Harrison. Thanks. And have a good one.